Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Ghost Stories in Folklore. Well, my friends, I hope you have enjoyed this series of ghost stories and folklore that has been focused on ghost stories at Christmas time. This is the last of the three videos, and it's featuring stories number 15 through 21. Make sure that you comment down in the comment section the title of your favorite Christmas tale from this video. Let's get started with story number 15. This one, my friends, is entitled The Haunted Tree. My parents and I lived in a small home that was around 90 years old. We lived there from the time I was 7 until I was 19. From the very day we moved in, I felt that I was not alone. One year around Christmas time, I was having a friend spend the night. The heat had just shut off briefly, and she and I were sitting in the living room watching television when the temperature dropped dramatically. As I rose to turn up the heat, the Christmas tree began to shake violently. Ornaments were falling off left and right, and she and I were terrified. We ran upstairs and lay down on my bed. My little white cat curled up with us and my door was open slightly. When I gazed out at the dark hallway, I was horrified to see a tall figure run down the hall. I turned to my friend and she acknowledged that she had seen the exact same thing. Needless to say, she never spent the night at my house ever again. The next one, my friends, is the ghostly gathering of kings at Volvo Castle. Poland's Volvo Royal Castle was built on Volvo Hill in the 1500s. Within the hill lies a deep cave known as the Dragon's Den. Legend has it that a great dragon once leaped there, terrorizing the locals before Prince Kroc bravely vanquished the dragon and brought peace to Poland. To memorialize the event, my friends, a statue of the dead dragon now stands in the cave. Go deeper into the cave and you come to another chamber. And it is here that on December 24th every year, all the long gone kings of Poland are said to meet and hold a spectral special council. This next one is not of a haunting or a ghost story, but more of a true tragedy. It is entitled The Mistletoe Bride of Bromshow House. In the early 17th century, a young woman named Anne was to be married on Christmas Day at Bromshow House in Hampshire, England. After the ceremony and feast, as was tradition at the time, the guests were all set to carry the bride to the bedchamber. Anne suggested a game be played and asked for a five minute head start before the guests came to find her. Everyone searched long and hard for Anne, but no sign of her could be found. At first they thought she had played a merry trick, but soon a sense of unease fell over the guests. The bridegroom, Lord Lovell, was distraught, and guests began to whisper that she must have fled. Days, weeks, months, and years passed, and Lord Lovell never stopped looking for his bride. One day, some fifty years after her disappearance, Lord Lovell was up in the huge attic of the sprawling mansion, where he began tapping on the oak panel. As he knocked, a long hidden secret door sprung open 
and inside he found an ornate wooden chest. He pried open the heavy wooden lid, and there, still in her wedding dress and clutching her mistletoe bouquet, were the skeletal remains of his beloved. The scratch marks on the inside of the lid of the chest attested to her desperate but futile effort to free herself from her hiding place. This story is called Warned by a Guardian Angel. It was just a few days before Christmas and I had some last minute Christmas shopping to do. Working full time and being a full time mom there was a rare chance to get out and have some time to myself. It was dusk and the weather was overcast and chilly. I entered the store with a real Christmas spirit. I browsed here and there looking down at my ragged purse. I realized that perhaps I should splurge and buy myself a new purse. I decided that since I was there to shop, I may as well buy myself a new item. After about five minutes of browsing, I noticed a man. He did not bring attention to himself, rather something brought my attention to him. He was a young adult, dark skinned tall, with a head of long, dark, curly hair. He was really good looking, with a well-defined jawline, high cheekbones, and great complexion. He was wearing a long, tan-colored trench coat. He was standing in front of me, about ten feet away. He seemed interested in the purses also. I resumed looking at every purse in the aisle when out of nowhere and totally unexpected. A voice boomed in my head. Look up, you are being followed. Instinctively, I looked up without hesitation. There was the same man standing several yards in front of me, still looking at the purses. Of course, this unsettled me, so I decided to leave the purse aisle. I went to a couple of other departments in the store, but the same guy was never more than 20 feet away from me. He was unlikely store security. The man was tracking me alright, but for ominous reasons. Unbeknownst to this man, I had been alerted to his presence by that voice. By now, my Christmas spirit was fading, and I decided to check out. As I approached the checkout counters, there stood the same young man, reading a paperback book from the book racks. I paid for my goods and headed for the front exit lobby doors. As I approached the front exit, I saw that same individual again. He was in the store lobby, pacing back and forth. I was immediately reminded how a lion acts in a cage at the zoo, and now I knew this person was just as deadly. A people greeter was standing just a few feet from the exit doors. I told her, that young man in the trench coat in the lobby has been following me throughout the store. Can you please get someone to walk me to my car? She said yes, I'll be right back. I stood there because I did not want my stalker to realize I was on to him. I looked to my right, the canteen was there, and maybe I could waltz over and look at the menu. I was starting to get hungry. As I started to walk toward the canteen, my skin crawled. There in the canteen area, sitting at the table, glaring right at me was my would-be stalker. His eyes met mine for about three seconds. They were full of hate. A guardian angel had throttled me whatever evil plan he had for me, and he was not very happy. 
He walked back into the store while I stared at the floor and then sat down at the canteen to maintain an innocent demeanor. But the glare in his eyes gave it away. He knew I had been warned by a guardian angel, and I knew that he knew it as well. This one is entitled The Returned Relative. It was Christmas time at my aunt's house on the reservation in North Dakota. Some of my family was in the living room watching television. The kids were playing in their rooms or sleeping, and my uncle, aunt, and I were sitting at the table putting a puzzle together. My cousin, who worked at the casino, would come home around midnight. This night, as she pulled up and was walking toward the house, she looked into the window and saw me sitting at the table. My uncle was sitting across from me, and someone was standing to the left of me, and someone else was standing in the corner. So she continued to walk in the house, thinking nothing of it. As we were sitting there talking, she looked at me and asked who was standing next to me a few minutes ago, and who was in the corner. I told her, no one, and she said, yeah, there was someone standing next to you. It looked like your mom and she was playing with your hair. You see, I have long hair, which I used to wear down all the time. She said this person was running her hand on my hair like a mother does to a child. At first, this kind of bothered me a little bit, since I was probably only 12 or 13 at the time. My cousin swears up and down that someone was standing over me rubbing my head and watching me put the puzzle together and there was another person that was standing behind in the corner. We got around to thinking it over and and talking about it and we determined that it was probably her mom she saw. You see her mother passed away on her birthday just a week before Christmas. In my family, we consider our aunts and uncles to be just like our moms and dads. After thinking that it could have been her, it didn't scare me much anymore. However, we could not figure out who the person was standing in the corner. And ever since then, always around Christmas time, something strange always seems to happen. But we just keep thinking, it is my aunt coming back to visit us. This one is entitled Spirits in My Baby Monitor. It was December and I was a first time mother And although my husband and I were together, we weren't yet living under the same roof. My daughter's nursery was adjacent to my bedroom. In our newly built home, I could hear her through the baby monitor when she woke up around 3 a.m. to be fed. About a week before Christmas, I was woken at precisely 2.33 a.m. by a sound coming through the monitor of two men conversing loudly. They were talking about trying to catch a young man who had stolen a piece of meat from the kitchen. At the time, I thought I must somehow be picking up a conversation between police officers over the radios. At exactly 2.33 a.m. the following night, I was again woken by what sounded like the same conversation. I tried to tell myself that I had got crossed wires with police radios and that there must be a meat thief in the village. However, when it happened again at the very same time on the third night, I felt very unsettled and began to dread those nocturnal disturbances which happened again over the next two nights. Then in the early hours of Christmas Eve, 
I woke with a strong feeling that someone was watching me. Opening my eyes, I saw a middle-aged man, dressed in a top hat and coattails, standing at the foot of my bed. He seemed transparent, his body hazily illuminated by the light from the street lamp shining through my curtains. My only thought was, you're a ghost, and then, appearing irritated, he strode out through my bedroom door. Glancing at my phone, I saw it was 2.33 a.m., and the same conversation about the boy and the meat played out again through the monitor. I wasn't worried any harm would come to my daughter because I knew he wasn't a real person, but a ghost. So what could he do? Friends and family tried to convince me I was probably just dreaming and I don't blame them. I too would have been skeptical before this happened to me. I did a little bit of research and discovered that an old manor house had been knocked down in the 50s to make way for the housing estate we lived on. I guess the ghostly figure had lived there before, which is why he looked so aristocratic. And presumably the boy who stole the meat from the kitchen was below stairs staff. When my husband asked me to move in with him shortly afterwards, I was relieved, and although we went on to have three more children, I never allowed a baby monitor in my house again. The next one is the haunted dining room at the Crescent Hotel. The Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas was built in 1886 and is rumored to harbor numerous ghosts who seem to be especially playful during the holidays. One Christmas the staff came down to set up the dining room only to find the Christmas tree had been moved from one side of the room to the other. Another year, all the menus in the dining room had been scattered around the room. Other visitors have reported seeing groups of ghostly dancers clad in Victorian era clothing whirling around the deserted dance floor. Thank you, my friends, and I hope you enjoyed these ghost stories at Christmas time. Please don't forget to enter the title of your favorite ghost stories from this video down in the comment section. And remember to catch the other two videos of more ghost stories. If you like this episode of Ghost Stories and Folklore, be sure to hit the like button. And if you would like more videos from Panity videos in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell for notifications, if you dare. <laughs>